After chopping a lot of wood that day, he sat down. The pile of firewood he had chopped was marked as 3.65 million, which surprised him. He couldn't believe he had chopped so much wood. Fortunately, he had earned the title of Saint of Chopping Firewood. Originally from Earth, he had become a popular young streamer through a reality show. However, he refused to obey the agency and was subsequently kept in the shadows, eventually succumbing to depression. Afterward, he was reborn in King Hong Academy in the south of Dunhuang and became a teacher in the Runic Seal Department. He had thought that after being reborn and acquiring the system, he would be able to showcase his strength and live a different life. To his surprise, he obtained a firewood chopping system, which was useless except for instructing him to chop firewood. Despite becoming the saint of chopping firewood, he had not yet broken through to the open light gate. While contemplating this, someone informed him that the headmaster had asked him to go to the front mountain palace examination, where he had to select his own disciples quickly. However, the person knew that with his cultivation level, he wouldn't receive any disciples even if he went. He told the person that he would take his leave. As he left, he pondered once again that he might not get a disciple even if he went. The thought of enjoying a barbecue for a long time came to his mind, and he considered seeing if the dragon in the Kangwu Abyss had grown fat. His name was Bai Laochen. Meanwhile, many people were enrolling for the Sword Arts Department at the Enrollment Plaza. Outland swordsman Zhang Hemingway quickly acquired over 500 disciples, which made others envious. On the contrary, no student applied for the Runic Seal exam, and they wondered why Bai Liuachen didn't even show up. Although he was a teacher on the revolving light stage, coming there would be embarrassing. However, it was irritating that someone like him, who they considered trash, occupied King Luan Peak, known for its beautiful scenery. Angry at Grandmaster Bai's behavior, they suggested dismissing him as a teacher and ordering him to move out of King Luan Peak to rectify the school's reputation. However, Headmaster Lai Guangqi of King Hong Academy reminded them not to forget that Junior Master Bai had lost all his cultivation and spent 10 years in the revolving light stage to protect the academy. Jiang Heming disagreed, acknowledging Bai's contributions but stating that his current state needed to be more suitable for him to continue as a teacher. Yan proposed dismissing Bai from his teaching position but allowing him to remain on King Lian Peak. One of the standing teachers appreciated Yan's suggestion, agreeing that it was the right approach. As the discussion continued, Bai arrived, feeling deeply touched. Jiang approached him, mentioning that he seemed to be in good spirits but asked if it wasn't humiliating to be injured while catching a snake. Bai explained that the snake, which he called a beast, had some cultivation and almost killed him. Although instructor Bai's cultivation was weak, he had a sense of humor. The snake he held appeared ordinary, and people wondered what kind of cultivation it could possess. Liang suggested that they immediately treat Grandmaster Bai's injuries. He mentioned having a five elements pill for cultivating Yuan and offered it to Bai. However, he clarified that Bai would only receive the pill if he obtained a disciple that day, otherwise, he would have to resign. Bai replied that he was too lazy to play that kind of game with Zhang. With this, Zhang confronted the headmaster and stated that instructor Bai had become tiresome, lazy, and had a low realm. He argued that such a person was not worthy of being a teacher and pleaded with the headmaster to dismiss Bai. The other teachers supported Zhang's claim, agreeing that Bai was no longer suitable for teaching. Amidst the complaints, headmaster Lai asked for Bai's opinion. Bai responded by saying that it didn't matter to him and that he didn't have to do anything. He told them that as long as they allowed him to stay at King Luan Peak, he was fine with whatever the senior brothers decided. Meanwhile, one of the teachers contemplated that once Bai lost his position, King Luan Peak would belong to him. They wondered how a mere cultivator in the revolving light stage could occupy such a place. As the murmuring continued, Headmaster Lai silenced them and prepared to make an announcement. However, before he could finish, someone shouted from the crowd, causing Lai to pause. The person expressed their willingness to study under instructor Bai and learn runic seal arts. The crowd began to murmur, complaining that Bai had been in the revolving light stage for 10 years and was weaker than a chicken. They compared him to worthless scrap iron and questioned the lady's reasoning, reminding her of their earlier criticisms that Bai was trash and incapable of teaching a disciple anything. They suggested that being a student under him would be more like being a maid. Jiang commented that he thought the lady was very talented and had excellent spiritual roots. He offered her the highest position in the sword arts department, but she firmly clung to Bai's hand, declaring that she had made her decision and pleaded for instructor Bai to accept her. Bai asked her if she wasn't acting too suddenly and refused her plea, stating that he had just decided to resign. Jiang became frustrated and questioned how anyone could give up the sword arts department to learn runic seal from someone like Bai. He concluded that there must be something going on, suggesting that the woman was someone Bai planned to place beside him. He speculated that they were acting to gain the highest position in the sword arts department, turning it into Bai's domain, where he could take whatever he wanted. 
Jiang expressed his refusal to fall for their scheme and referenced the saying, a melon twisted by force is not sweet, implying that he wouldn't force the lady to stay. Bai Laochen faced the lady and asked why she insisted on choosing him as her teacher, pointing out that he was merely a trash in the revolving light stage. The lady informed Bai that she was a reincarnation of an immortal. She revealed that in her previous life, she had to reincarnate with her memories intact due to unsuccessful cultivation. She expressed her desire to join the sword arts department, confident that her talent and appearance would allow her to obtain over 80% of the cultivation resources in that department. However, she unexpectedly found a genuine master in Bai at the last minute. With her immortal insight, she claimed she would never be wrong. It was evident to her that the snake Bai was holding was about to transform into a dragon. Judging by the standards of human cultivators, it was a supreme master in the Mahayana stage. Even if she was an immortal in her past life, she wouldn't dare to say she could subdue a snake on the verge of becoming a dragon. However, what puzzled her was how Bai Laochen, someone only in the revolving light stage, managed to tame the dragon. After all, was said, and since instructor Jiang didn't depose it, had Master Lai proceeded with the announcement. However, Bai stopped him, informing them that he still had something to say. He revealed that the lady who wanted to be his disciple was officially transferred from the Sword Arts Department to the Runic Seal Character Department. After some intense discussions, the conference came to an end. As they left the conference center, Jiang approached Bai and his newfound disciple. He congratulated Bai Laochen on finding a good disciple and playfully mentioned that the runic seal department would succeed in the academy examination in three months. Bai found Jiang's attitude strange and asked if Jiang had hit his head somewhere. After Jiang left, Bai asked the lady what he should call her. She introduced herself as Su Liu. Bai thought to himself that if he had known earlier, he wouldn't have come, as he had unnecessarily caused trouble for himself. He felt tired of the situation. Bai commented that Su Liu had a good name, and as she respectfully referred to him as master, Bai realized he had no choice but to accept her. He thought of the saying, the master will lead his disciple inside, but the cultivation can only depend on the disciple. He understood that what happened next would be entirely up to her. Bai Laochen was known to be a bad guy, so why would he allow himself to be bullied? With his level of cultivation, he could quickly destroy King Hong Academy. So why does he tolerate this treatment? Bai Laochen called Miss Su over and wanted to clarify a few things with her under his instruction. First, they plan formal lessons outside the runic seal department. It's more about self-awareness and personal exploration. Second, she is free to come and go as she pleases without reporting to him. Third, he acknowledged the scarcity of cultivation resources due to the lack of students but assured her that he would treat her well as her teacher and would provide her with the necessary resources. As for the fourth point, he had yet to figure it out and asked if she had any questions, to which she replied that she didn't. Considering it a positive response, he had prepared two things for her and instructed her to take them. The first was a textbook that covered all runic seals, arranged by difficulty, serving as his recommended reference. The second was a book of practice exercises, also marked with corresponding difficulty levels. He advised her to follow the pace of her studies and cautioned against being greedy and progressing too quickly or taking on too much. Bai also mentioned that he would check on her progress periodically and advised her to be active. She expressed her gratitude and assured him that she would remember his teachings. Bai showed her the disciples' quarters, which were all vacant, and told her to choose one where she could stay. He also informed her that if she lacked anything, she could approach the disciples from the internal affairs department, who would assist her. While this was happening, Sue wondered if it was too late to request a department change, but she dismissed the thought and decided to endure it, understanding that if it was difficult, so be it. As she entered her apartment, she noticed a pleasant aroma. To her surprise, Bai Laochen was roasting dragon meat. Dragons were immortal beasts, if he managed to obtain them, he had to offer them to the patriarch. However, he was immediately consuming them after roasting. She had cultivated for thousands of years but had never tasted dragon meat before. Intrigued, she approached Bai and mentioned that she was getting hungry. She asked if she could have some heart, but he declined. She never expected a dignified immortal like herself to be denied a bite of meat. If the Taoists from her previous life learned about this, they would surely laugh at her to death. Master Bai told her not to look at him like that because when he says no, he means it. Disappointed, she took her leave. However, as she took a few steps, she slowed down and asked again if she could have some. Master Bai gave her a tiny piece to lick and told her that disciples should not consider their master petty. He suggested that she would understand why he acted that way once she licked the meat. He handed her the piece to lick. As she tasted it, she felt that the spiritual energy was vibrant, to the point where she couldn't handle it. She realized that even a tiny bite contained the power equivalent to at least half a year of cultivation. Given her current realm, she knew she couldn't handle the overwhelming energy the dragon meat contained. 
She feared that she would indeed explode and die if she ate it directly. Su thanked Master Bai for his generosity and he advised her that one lick per day was sufficient. He warned against being greedy. She assured him that she would remember. At another place, the horse that Instructor Bai raises has a lot of spirituality. The last time a few clansmen tried to seal the horse, they were beaten by it. Two guys jumped the building wall while the other asked his senior brother if they were enough. The brother told him not to worry, assuring him that he had made enough preparations this time. His thousands of days of drunkenness that he recently researched, for monsters grade 5 and below, just a whiff of the thing, and they will faint straight away. Just as they were talking, they noticed someone. It was Master Bai. He remembered when he first got a thin and small horse, just like a donkey, and now it finally had a majestic look. He told the horse to watch over the place as he went to sleep. Just as he was moving, the two brothers made their move and went to where the horse was tied. They felt the horse should return to their own beast taming department. A few minutes earlier, someone bold has dared to come to King Lu and peek and act so atrociously. Sue felt she ought to teach the person a lesson. Meanwhile, the two brothers were feeding the horse with what they brought. Suddenly, Sue appeared to their shock. She asked who they were and asked them to state their names. The junior brother asked why another person was there, and the brother replied that that should be a weirdo that gave up the top spot at the swordsmanship department and wanted to learn under the trash by Lauchen instead. They told her it had nothing to do with her and go back to her room and sleep. Still, she told them as long as she was there, they should not even think of touching her master's things. And then they challenged her to do it the hard way, telling her not to blame them for what will happen and then the brother dashed towards her with high speed, but she kicked him at the jaw which sent him flying back. They saw that the girl had got some stuff, but the senior brother summoned up more energy to retake her, and if he couldn't beat her, then the junior should help him out. Again, he dashed with a quick splash speed of fire at her again but was kicked back with a single leg kick by the waist, sending him down. He saw that the fire he used was eating up his spiritual energy. Sensing that the older brother has been injured, the junior brother decided to help him but was also kicked back with a single kink which sent him awkwardly down. She asked if that was a soundproof rune also and told them that her master had no plans to let them go as well when she gave them the last smackdown. The eldest senior brother of the beast taming department, He Ziying Sheng, was furious as he felt that was too much. The two brothers who you beat explained that they did their best. But you, Master Bai's new disciple, was just too firm, and they were no match for her. But they told their eldest brother, He Xuing Sheng, that once their injuries were treated, they will surely bring Zhui, the horse, back. He Ziying Sheng gave them each three spirit-restoring pills and two energy-nourishing pills, telling them to consume that as compensation for their injuries. They thanked them while he told them to tend to their injuries again, and that he would handle the rest for them. He Ziying Sheng told everyone in the beast taming department to follow him to King Lu and Peak as he would have to do justice to what had happened. While they were on their way, one of the brothers who was beaten earlier asked their elder brother to wait and informed him that Bai was an instructor after all. And that time they were at fault, if they went there together, they would be caught in more trouble. He Ziying Sheng asked if they should just let it go, but their department owned the horse, and on what ground did he have to take it? Still, the junior brother told him that was not what he meant but that his disciples severely violated the Institute's rules by beating them up like that. They just had to stand on the moral high ground having handled those two juniors. That Bai will surely be speechless and that time they can then ask for Wu Zhui. He has to take care of his disciple, so there is no way he would refuse. That looks like they had a plan, and they decided to do it that way. So they went to the law enforcement hall. While at their own place, Bai has just woken up, and Su walks up to him as he goes to the wood and he asks her how the book was the night before. Even though she spent all night reading but just after reading half a page. Her energy was all finished, and she couldn't even get through just the half page. Master Bai told her she gets what she gets and won't do anything to her. The cultivation book that Master Bai gave her was obviously great, but it turned out that she didn't understand. Master Bai asked her once again if she read half a page in one night. Sue felt sorry for having disappointed her master by reading half a page in a night. But Master Bai told her she had misunderstood her as he was not disappointed and he just received a happy surprise and thought she would be able to read a few questions. Yu, from her own perspective, thought that for her master to say that he believed she was stupid, but he told her Ji was feeling pleasantly surprised. The book was a collection of his runes and seal characters. He didn't expect her to read half of the page in one night, although the knowledge of runes and seal characters was required, and he told her not to rush to succeed. He threw her something which was a token and told her she can go to the academy library to read books. She can also take other martial scripts and when the token level is raised, she can go to the higher level and that was where she would find better martial arts script than she asked what she should do to increase the token level. 
She told her that one was to complete the task of the front range of the academy that was irregularly released, and the other was to participate in the disciples' trial. She told him she understood and thanked him for his advice. Compared with the master's book, she has been immortal for at least 10,000 years, so she was not lacking in any martial arts script. THR secret script given by Master Bai was enough for her Thai study all her life. She thought she didn't need to learn anything else. Sue asked what the matter was as she noticed Master Bai was standing and looking in a direction. They heard the voice calling them that Sue should come down quickly to accept her punishment. Miss Sue told Master Bai that they might be THR thugs who came to the Kinglu and peaked the previous night and were cared for by her. She didn't hold back, so she was afraid she had caused some trouble, but Master Bai told her it was alright and that she should leave everything to him. All she needed to do was study hard, and then they decided to go see the situation. Law Enforcement Hall Agent Song Lang told them the Law Enforcement Hall received a report about Su Liyui, a runic seal department disciple who ignored the Academy's rules and maliciously hurt her fellow disciples. They should please respect the laws of the Academy and hand over Su Liyu. Master Bai saw this as a show as he looked amazed at the number of people who came for his disciple. The Law Enforcement Agency agent, Zhao Cheng, also told them the evidence was clear and they should please come with them. Master Bai told them not to rush, pointing toward the one behind. He told them he wanted to know about the two disciples of the beast taming department who ran into King Luan Peak in the middle of the night to make trouble while the law enforcement agents asked how the disciples were taken care of and he Ziyang Sheng told them the disciples had just accidentally slipped into King Luan Peak and he had punished them himself severely. This made Master Bai also say his disciple, Miss Su, had also injured them accidentally injured them and he could handle it himself so there was no need to bother the law enforcement hall and they made their move to go back to their castle. Ziyang Sheng shouted at them to stop as the law enforcement hall had found Miss Su guilty and if Master Bai persisted, things would not end well for him. This threatening word made Master Bai stop and ask if he was teaching him things. They all looked at him, frustrated and how he was covering for the criminal who worsened the crime. The junior brothers suggested that they take Miss Su Liu away quickly while also asking Master Bai if he remembered that fighting with the law enforcement hall had never had a good end. Still, Master Bai told them they were just a few brats and asked them if they really thought they could represent the law enforcement hall. This made the law enforcement agents there with them angry as they asked how Master Bai dared to humiliate the law enforcement hall and told him they would take himself and Miss Su, his disciple to the law enforcement hall for punishment, asking him if he thought he was the genius instructor who taught 10 years ago and even called him a piece of trash in the revolving light stage and how he actually dares to confront the law enforcement hall. He seemed to not really care about his life or death. Master Bai told Miss Sue that she should take the matter on the ground as a test to check what she had learned the previous night. She should not disappoint him, which she vividly understood then, and moved towards those who charged at her and her master. She was amazed to discover that those two which Master Bai told her to fight were actually weak and it was not worth his time and as she continued to fight them. She sensed that as long as she kept close to her master, she would be able to ascend in no time. To the other people's amazement, they saw Miss Sue drawing runes, runes even which a runic seal master has to remove the seal in advance. Still, she was drawing them in the middle of a battle, and they felt like she was looking down on them, and then they decided to use something. They joined forces to interrupt her, but they were too much and were not letting her finish drawing the runes. Despite this, she saw them as nothing more than how they had done. All their efforts didn't work, and it was at this time that Miss Sue decided to get a little serious. Master Bai saw that it was a thunder attribute but the snake gall was a wood attribute, so he couldn't give it to her yet. It looked like he should go to the boys of Kangwu again to find a thunder attribute realm breaking object for her, and as he was thinking all this, Miss Su was done with dealing with the guys. The guys complained to their junior brother that he would not make his move since they came there because of him. Xian Cheng became curious as how Song Land had to call him out at the moment. He felt that both his younger brothers couldn't even beat her, so what made them think he could do so? Suddenly, Miss Su threw a rune at him, which surprised him, leaving him wondering as he went on his knees. But actually, she was aiming for Song Lang, which made Miss Su wonder if she had just misthreaded it. And before she continued, Master Bai told her to stand down. Meanwhile, they still saw Master Bai's action as a provocation. He disregarded his disciples' crime and fought against the law enforcement. This made Xian Cheng tell him that the enforcement agency hall would not let it slide and he would regret what he had done. Still, Master Bai was not freaked with this threat as he told him that the ones who should be mourning should be the three of them who has come to attack him and he told them to kneel, and they all knelt. And this seemed like a surprise for them as someone in the revolving light stage couldn't have such an overwhelming spiritual Kai. Master Bai told them they should not forget the place's King Luan Peak, and this also sounded like a surprise for them as they asked if he had already recovered. Well, he did not only recover, the instructors in the academy can borrow the spiritual Kai of Lingfeng. 
Master Bai told them he would save Elder Tu's face, but as for Xiang Sheng, he told him to kneel there until his senior brother Yu personally came to talk with him. While at the Vice Instructor Cheng's place, the Vice Instructor of the Beast Taming Department he had been waiting for them for several hours and asked what the situation exactly was. Two disciples came and told him that it was not how he had thought, and the problem was that Xiang Sheng was still kneeling at King Luan Peak. Cheng told the two disciples who came to him that they could return to the law enforcement hall and he would personally take care of the matter, and they told him they should not bother him anymore. While they were going away, they thought that even if Bai Laochen had King Lian Peak as his support, he would definitely not be the opponent of someone in the leaving aperture stage. After their departure, Chen called Yin Hai and told her she should come with him the next day's night to King Luan Peak and bring her master brother back. Meanwhile, Master Bai was sitting at his peak and wondering how it's been a whole day and not a single person from the beast taming department come. Then he went to the wood training center where he saw the fantastic moves of Miss Su, who was training. He told her he had to go out and if anyone from the beast taming department came there, she should use a seal which he handed to her. She also assured him not to worry as she would never let others come to make trouble, and Master Bai told her to watch over the case as he would be back in the morning at the earliest, while she also bade him a safe journey. They moved to the Abyss of Changwu, which was the residence of the Yunhuang demon race, THR deeper into it, the higher the demon race's realm would be. There were coiled dragon pillars on one side and a white pool ridge on another, while we also had Jilai Valley, a green rhino cliff, and Kinghong Academy. In the deepest parts of all the places were the twelve ancestral types of denim that even the people in the Mahayana stage avoided. With Liu's current realm, and Master Bai does not think she will be able to use the materials from an ancestral demon, so he just wanted to search for a lightning attribute demon king nearby and demand some stuff. Suddenly, he saw a lady who seemed to be a female disciple in the academy. She had a bully who was with her, and some disturbing things just kept coming her way. She felt really bad about it, so Master Bai decided to take a look at what was going on. The bully asked her if she had nothing on her at the moment and told her not to run anymore, as it was not like she would lose anything if she played with him. But she told him to dream on. The bully told him it was not the four arts department, just the female pet of the academy, and told her to be a good girl and give him good service so he could consider letting her go. She shouted never to allow him to touch her even if she were to die, and then she tried to grab her powers, but she told him her spiritual powers were sealed. He told her her face was so smooth, and other places should be more smooth. The lady became devastated as she thought she was destined to be defiled by such an evil person that day and then called her senior sister. At that moment, Master Bai shouted from afar, instructing her to hit the bully's danjong point, she saw the opportunity to do so, and this made the bully wonder why he could not move. Fortunately, it worked, and this made Enher overcome the bully. She and her senior sister thanked Master Bai, who, on the other hand, noticed that she was bowing to the air. He wondered if they were all the students trained by senior sister Yu so clumsy. Meanwhile, the bully and his colleague were angry as they threatened the ladies that they would pay for what they had done. The ladies also challenged them to come over to them if they had the guts, but she noticed that she did not have much spiritual Kai left. The other guy with the bully barked at her to stop pretending, as he knew she had used up all her spiritual energy just before and then charged at her. Sensing this, she asked Master Bai what next she should do, he told her to take one step to the left and hit his kidney acupoint, and fortunately for her, it worked out, and the guy was bound. The two sisters thanked Master Bai again, told him their senior sister's whereabouts were related to this person, and asked if she could deal with him after asking about where her sister was. The guy told them it was no use asking in order to keep her ridiculous innocence. She had already blown up her own sea of Kai and run away, but they didn't believe him as they believed their sister was not someone who could lose to people like them. He told them that since her Kai had been destroyed, he guessed the insects of Kangwu Abyss were now eating her. He also told them they could kill him if they had the guts and would see if the Formless Boundary Sect would let them go. Being a member of the Formless Boundary Sect surprised the sisters, and then Master Bai showed up. Master Bai asked the guy why the Northern Realm's Formless Boundaries sent him there, the guy was surprised and asked how he was there in amazement. Master Bai asked if he was that famous, and the guy told him he was just trash in the revolving light stage, and he sensed that was impossible. The other lady was also amazed as the person who helped her secretly was the useless Bai Laochen, recognized by the academy. Master Bai told the guy that he was not interested in playing interrogation games with him and requested that he tell him quickly, but the guy said to him that he wouldn't talk, which made Master Bai use his power on the guy. 
The lady again asked Master Bai that where she was going to find her senior sister now that he had killed the guy, and Master Bai told him that she was anxious but should calm down as he knew how to find her. He asked her if she had anything that belonged to her senior sister, perhaps something she had worn before. She told him a handkerchief was embroidered for her by her old sister. Then Master Bai made a bird from the flames of his hand and told the bird to go find the owner of the handkerchief while the lady wished the bird all the best as she told them she would leave her senior sister in its hand. The bird flew away. Meanwhile, at another place, the senior sister was complaining that who would have thought that after escaping from those bastards, she would fall into where she was. Now that her sea of Kai was destroyed, she guessed that mere 20 feet deep would become her grave and even wondered if Yun Ryuo was safe. It was at that time that the duo of Master Bai and Yun Ryuo, the younger sister, came to the pit, and this amazed her, although they saw that she was injured badly. So Yun Ryuo suggested that she would go inside the well and bring her out. But Master Bai told her not to be hasty as he would do it, and then he used a soaring talisman that formed bubbles and took her out of the well. The two sisters were pleased to see each other once again and thanked Master Bai for saving her sister, who was recognized as Yunxi. Master Bai gave her bitter, the five-element cultivation Yun pill to heal her body. They complained that it was the treasure of the Academy's pill department and it was too precious for her to use. Still, Master Bai asked them if it was time to be so picky about that kind of thing or if the pill was more important than her life and moreover, it was given to him for free by someone else, so they should take it. They thanked Master Bai for giving them such a precious thing and she used it. Yun Ryuo asked her elder sister Yunxi if she was feeling better, and she told them it was really worthy of being called a treasure. Her leg injury was instantly healed, and with this, they told Master Bai that they would remember the kindness he had shown them and would definitely repay him someday. Master Bai told them he did not want them to return the favor, with their strength now, they should not be there, and then he asked them for the reason they came to the Kangwu Abyss. Meanwhile, Miss Su has finally finished reading a page in the absence of her master, and it feels like she is about to break through. She thought she should go and cultivate next. Sure enough, someone has come to cause trouble while her master Bai was away. The maniac Bai Laochen allowed his disciples to violate the academy's rules and violently resisted law enforcement. Chen Kun, the vice professor of the beast taming department, called Miss Su to come out and receive her punishment. Su Liu's daily routine was cleaning her master's room. Once she found something, she wondered if it was her master's treasure. Master Bai asked the two sisters, Run and Yunxi, if they were both tired of living and how they could just run into a place where the demon king resided. Yunxi told him it was all her fault as she was trying to find materials to repair her master's instrument and Ab got greedy at the moment, and that led to the consequences they had now. Master Bai felt there seemed something off, there was something weird about this. She also told him she was chasing a ninth grade ice silk worn from the outskirts, and if her judgment was correct, the people of the formless boundary sect were also chasing it. Master Bai told her they should not be, it was only a ninth grade greater demon, so why would the formless boundary sect chase it from the northern realm? or could she have misjudged it? The Ice Silkworm was not a greater demon but a spirit demon in the molting period or even a demon king who had actually cultivated a human form. Run asked Master Bai if he was going to catch the Ice Silkworm, and he told them he would. The Ice Silkworm was an extremely rare demonic beast with both water and lightning attributes, and his disciple was about to break through, and she needed a lightning material, so the Ice Silkworm was the best. Master Bai told them they should move as he needed to hurry back before the sun fully rose. They commented that Master Bai really treated his disciple well, and Run and her senior sister Yunxi were really envious of her. Still, actually, they knew he really treated them well. While at home, Vice Professor Chen Kun shouted at the top of his voice and ordered Master Bai Laochen to come out immediately. But Miss Su was the one who opened the door and apologies to them and informed them that her master was out at the moment, and told them she would pass on whatever they had to say to her master later. Upon seeing her, Vice Professor Chen Kun ordered her to kneel, but she told him she had not done anything wrong and for what reason she would kneel. He told her that when she saw an elder, she should kneel down and asked if that was the trash Master Bai Laochen taught her or if he did not teach her THR rules of the academy. She gave her apologies and told him she had never heard of such a rule and that her master was not trash. She then requested that Vu's Professor Chen Kun should be more respectful to her master. This annoyed Vice Professor Chen Kun as he saw that as disrespect and how a newly admitted disciple talked back to him dearly. He used his power to order her to kneel and kneel, but she still insisted on not doing anything wrong and still stood her ground. Never to kneel, then Chen required to see how long she could keep her mouth shut and then began to throw her the powerful push with his energetic aura. 
but she still insisted. Vice President Chen saw that in order not to kneel down, she actually burnt down her own realm. He sensed that even being a female, she was actually really serious. And if word of this gets out, he and the beast taming department will definitely lose face, and he felt she could not stay. As a result of this, he orders Yin Hai to go and kill her, but Yin Hai asks if that is really okay, and Chen tells her to kill her if she is told to or if she is also going to disobey her master. Yin Hai replied to him that she would never do that, it was just that she felt the junior sister had done nothing worthy of death and should allow her to talk with her if she would be willing to admit her wrongdoing and they should spare her life. Despite this, Miss Su told them she does not know a failure of a master like Vice President Si Jen would be able to produce a more human disciple, which indicates that she has said what she wanted to say and if she does not die that day she will definitely make sure they regret it in the future. Yin Hai replied to her that she was someone who wanted face, and if she knelt down and admitted her wrongdoings, the matter would end there, and it would not be worth it to put her life on the line to protect her pride Miss Su spoke. Disappointment that she didn't expect that the sect which has the best reputation in the Yunhuang southern realm would hide such scum like Vice Professor Chen. Yin Hai asked her why she had bothered herself, and Miss Su told her there was no need Tai talk. If her master wanted her dead, then she should go on and kill her as she would never beg for mercy. And because Yin Hai could not disobey her master, she said sorry for what will happen. But actually, the one saying sorry should be Miss Su as the movie was supposed to be for her scum master. Suddenly, Zio, the horse, came and knocked Yin Hai to the ground, which amazed them all. Chen saw that it should not be surprising for him again how he Ziying Sheng was obsessed with the horse, it was a spirit demon. Even though the horse had not shown up, Chen would not have thought about it. But since it had jumped out itself, then he summoned his power which appeared in his hand and told the horse not to blame him but blame itself. As the horse was about to jump on him, he threw the power aura at it as a punch, which made the evil beast fall to the ground, heavily injured. On seeing this, Miss Su shouted at Vice Professor Chen to kill her, and if he did not do so and she survived, she would definitely return and make him pay for what he had done. This made him want to grant her wish. She saw the distance between them, a space that the Moon Fairy Wheel would definitely hit and burn her realm previously so she could use the move to bring him down, she jumped and passed through him. But fortunately, he was prepared and if he had not brought a treasure to protect himself he would have died for nothing. So he thought that for her to be able to fight Song Lang, the two trashes, she had some tricks up her sleeves, and he saw that she must be taken down. Miss Su felt that her spiritual power had been depleted, and Vice Professor Chen had tied her with the aura power of a string. Then he pulled her closer to himself and held her neck tightly as she tried to talk. She promised him that her master would surely make him pay for what he was doing, while he replied her that he has also long decided to kill him together with her, as her trash master has never amounted to anything in his eyes. Just then, the horse that had been lying unconscious before stood up and began to run toward them. Miss Su tried to shout at Zio as the horse was called not to come closer to them and run away. Vice Professor Chen told her he would kill her first, catch the horse, and teach it slowly. Suddenly she remembered what her master had told her before leaving. If the beast taming department came looking for trouble, then she should use a talisman. Then she struggled and successfully brought out the amulet. But Chen told her now that it had come to that extent, what would the paper even do when suddenly there was lightning? Vice President Chen was amazed at how ridiculous that looked, she had just stopped his power and sent him off with an injury on his body, and all his clothes were thorn while he also lay on the ground helpless. Yin Hai went to her master's aid, suggesting they return first as the injuries were much. Still, Chen insisted and asked her how could someone like him go away without doing anything when Miss Su ruined his protective treasure, and then he requested Yin Hai to give him his five elements pill, and he took it all at once. He was so confident and, with great pride, told them he refused to believe that an instructor like him could not teach Miss Su a lesson. H then charged at her with great outstanding anger and frustrating force to attack Miss Su, who was frightened as she thought that was the end but was later shocked after some minutes that she had not seen any attack on her. Suddenly she noticed her master, Master Bai Laochen, who had come to her aid, telling her not to talk as her heart had been severely damaged. Then he stood up and faced Vice Professor Chen because he had taken advantage of his absence to bully his disciple. He asked Chen if the morals of a vice instructor of the beast taming department to that much and then held Chen's head with a powerful aura, and drained all his power that he became weak and fell on the ground. Vice President Si Hen was someone in the leaving aperture stage, even among the many instructors in the academy, he could still rank among the top five, so he wondered how he could not beat a trash in the revolving light stage like Master Bai. Yin Hai shouted at him to stop and should not hit Chen again, and then Master Shi calls out the proclamation, Golden Bell. Chen, who was raging, was confused about how Master Bai could be healing him while hitting him, and that sounds humiliating to him. Master Bai told the two of them they should be grateful to Lai Guangqi, and if it were not for him, they would have been dead. Then he said Yin Hai to take Chen and get lost from King Luan Peak. 
again, Chen requested the five-element pill Yin Hai provided for him and told him to eat it slowly and let them leave after he finished. Still, he disagreed with her, telling her that Master Bai only got the upper hand because he ambushed him and boasted that he had not shown his true capabilities and asked for his storage ring. On the other part, Miss Su pleaded that she was sorry to her master, Bai Laochen, as she could not protect King Lu and Peak adequately, and even Xiao Wu got injured trying to protect her, but Master Bai told her it was not her fault. She had already done the best she could do, and the crucial step to repair her heart meridian will start at the moment so it will hurt a little and he urged her to bear with. Vice Professor Chen told Yin Hai to watch closely. There were new clothes from the storage ring, and that was his complete form. He was an 8th grade spirit demon and his most muscular guardian beast, which was the horned eagle, and proudly awaited how Master Bai and Su will defend against his new powers. Just then, Run and Yunxi showed up and called up to Master Bai that they were around, and this amazed him as he was not expecting them, but they actually came in time, and Master Bai asked them to take care of Miss Su Liu for him. For many years Master Bai has tried not to leave King Lu in peak and provoke others. In return, they made a more significant effort to take King Lu in peak and even tried to kill his disciple, and as a result of all that had been happening, he became enraged. At that moment, with what Vice President Chen had done, and then he summoned the blood-rapturing talisman, which made him look crazy, a talisman that can dissolve people into a pool of blood, even the soul would not be spared. Sensing the danger, Chen shouted he couldn't die, but it was late as the talisman came right through him. And he fell, he threatened Master Bai that they were all instructors of the academy, and would suffer divine retribution for using the blood-rapturing talisman against him. But Master Bai was not concerned with his word as he told him that he was the divine retribution, and then he moved closer to him while Chen shouted at him not to come any closer. When Su Liu's talisman activated, Master Bai chirruped and said Liu Su was in trouble. With the power of THR blood rapturing talisman, there was only Vice President Chen's cloth that was left, and that really looked horrifying, sensing this. Yin Hai knelt down and begged Master Bai who replied that he it was not that he really wanted to do that, but Vice President Chen was who brought it all upon himself and told her that he was not fond of killing unnecessarily. So she should take that as a lesson and if she wants to find a master in the future, she must remember to find at least one who is human, and because he does not want anyone else to know what has happened that night. He told her not to take away her senior brother who was kneeling in front of the door too, and she thanked him for his generosity. While the two sisters, Run and Yunxi, were contemplating not getting in the way there anymore, and they told Master Bai that they would be going off. They thanked him for what he had done for them and promised to visit him often in the future. And he also welcomed them and told them the house is always open for them to see. And he also reminded them that they should say hello to senior sister Yu for him when they return. Deep within, Su wondered if they would come to their place often or not. Miss Su noticed something in the sky and asked Master Bai if there was something in the sky. He told her there was nothing, but as he had expected, someone was spying on King Lu and Peak. At the seclusive, the Supreme Elder, on the other hand, was angry about how Master Bai Laochen could use such a vicious method to kill his nephew. Since he knew Master Bai cherished his disciple so much, they decided to do something for the year's trial examination. In contrast, the law enforcement elder, Twangsheng, told him their agency had already made arrangements. Back with Master Bai and his disciple Su, he told her that he had something for her. Then he showed her the ice silkworm that he had caught and said that he originally wanted to get her a broken mirror fabric, but he came across the ice silkworm and decided to take it along too. The ice silkworm was clearly a demon king whose strength was comparable to cultivators in the recombing stage, but it was being so obedient to Master Bai. Master Bai told her that the ice worm has the dual attributes of lightning and water, so it fits her exceptionally well, and she should let it assist her in the future in her cultivation. In her previous life, even as a free immortal, she had difficulty subduing demon kings, but her master just gave it to her like this, making her hug him sincerely for what he had done. Master Bai told her that the big test was coming up, so she should recover her strength as soon as possible, and she told him he should not worry as she would not disappoint him. Master Bai told her she did not have to be too nervous. When it was time for the trial exam, it should not be a big problem for her, what's more. She could also bring in the ice silkworm, but that looked like cheating. But Master Bai told her he would be able to suppress the ice silkworm's realm to a level that she can bring it in. She felt like if he could do that, she doubted if she would be happy, but Master Bai wanted to suppress the realm at that time but still also told her that it would hurt her a little for the first time, so he told her to bear it. Miss Su wondered why the ice silkworm's cultivation improved instead of it being suppressed. It was stopped, and if her cultivation was to improve, and when it was done. The demon king Mai Meng greeted Miss Su and requested that she be called Xiao Meng. To not exaggerate, the demon king was too cute. Miss Su had always thought that the demons were all so fierce and evil-looking, and this was the first time she had seen such a cute transformation. 
The demon king, Xiao Meng, asked Miss Su if she had just joined the sect and if she had already met other powerful kings. Miss Su told her that it was just that she happened to have seen the portraits of demon kings in a book before and fortunately her master did not notice. As Master Bai saw that the two were getting along together, he told Xiao Meng that he left Miss Su's breakthrough to her, who in return told him not to worry as she would do her best and as it was getting late, she also told him to go back to his room early and rest. Yun Zai's guess seemed to be suitable as the piece of jade that V Xiaomeng was desperately guarding was the real goal of the formless boundary sect. But what was weird to Master Bai was that the system could not even analyze the jade. So what wonderful about it what he has not figured out. The hoist has triggered a random task, and Master Bai was told that if his disciple, Miss Su, breaks through within five days and comes out on top in the trial exam, he will be awarded. Something suddenly appeared, showing some requirements. One star martial arts gift pack two-star special item gift pack, and a mystery prize. But if the host refuses or fails the task, his spiritual kai will be reduced by 30% which means the right of interpretation belongs to the system. It can give tasks too, but Master Bai thought it was just a wood chopping counter, and this indeed sounds strange to him, but there was something a bit off, it was requesting that the host should quickly accept the task, and Master Bai accepted it. But the rewards were really useless to him, and he decided to give them all to Miss Liu Su with the help of the ice silkworm. She should be able to break through in no time, and then he transferred it to her. Meanwhile, she was in her room at that time and felt it all so close to her. Five days later, some disciples were on their way and began to smell some things. They sensed that someone was roasting something somewhere, and the smell was so good. As they traced the aroma, they discovered that it was Instructor Bai Laochen, and they asked what he was doing, but Bai Laochen asked if Instructor Zhang was also interested in the roasted wild game. Just then, a bird appeared, asking if he would like to hear the words of their lord and savior, incomprehensible to humans. Although Master Bai Laochen called it a game, he was not sure what the weird-looking bird came that came to Azure Peak Bird was. Zhang told her that place was not a venue for their academy's trial exam, and he had just been doing something outrageous. Master Bai began to sense that they all smelled good, but he told them he was roasting food over at where he was and did not think he was affecting the trial in any way. But Jiang told them all of the disciples should get back in and line up correctly and then he began to walk up to where Master Bai was sitting and roasting, countcashing him that someone like him was not fit for the title of the instructor, which he also said he knew. One of the disciples commented that their Beastmaster department was screwed and did not know why. But both senior brother he and senior brother Yin suddenly went into closed door cultivation. Another one replied that he got it wrong in that aspect. And since those two didn't come along with them, they could finally have a chance to shine. Meanwhile, Su Liu was passing along the way, Feng Zhu of the extermination department and mid-state fusion realm saw her, and commented on how not bad her talent was but thought it was a pity she decided to become the disciple of a cripple. He greeted her and introduced himself to her, with a back thought of having her watch him win her over with his suave, but instead of her answering him, she went straight to her master, but he told her that he was busy and she should just knock it off. She asked what Master Bai was cooking at that time and requested if he could give her a bite, but Master Bai told her that he was not sure what the thing was, and the amount of spiritual kai in there was still too much for her to handle. All this made Feng Zhu become furious, he was angry because Miss Su ignored him, considering himself a handsome guy. But head instructor Yu Wangsang of the extermination department told him not to be agitated just because of a woman and he should remember jealousy is something only weak and incapable people feel. Just as this was being said, the four arts departments came, and the male disciples were anxious as the female disciples looked at their side. The four arts department instructor Moon Chuanju walked up to head instructor Yu Wangsang felt that it was a coincidence as he walked up to talk with her. But she instead went to Master Bai to appreciate him for saving her disciples and Master Bai introduced Miss Su to senior sister Moon informing her that Miss Moon is her aunt master and they both greeted themselves. As a result of this, instructor Yu became more furious and this made his disciple remind him. He told them that jealousy was something only weak and incapable people feel, but he told them he was not jealous or does it look like he was jealous. As the time goes on, the task elder told them all to keep quiet, informing them that the trial will take place in the secret realm and he will announce the rules. He told them that the time limit was two days and the ranking will be decided by the number of points collected at the very end. He also told them that. Other than finding and killing demons, they could also steal each other's tokens to earn points. But if Grandfather I catches anyone intentionally endangering the life of another disciple, he or she would be immediately disqualified and face punishment, and then he announced to them that the trial would officially begin. Feng Zhu instructed all members of the extermination department to charge and occupy all the advantageous locations while Miss Su also bid farewell to her master as she also made her moves, but deep inside her, she doesn't want to go at that time. 
senior sister Moon hugged Master Bai from behind, informing him that she heard it had not been long since he accepted his only disciple and then asked if he was not worried at all. But Master Bai told her that Yu was not only talented but also hard-working. She was perhaps not weaker than any of the disciples there and what's more, was she was Master Bai's disciple, a sneak into the daily life of Little Dream. She likes to wrap herself up into a cocoon, is kind and friendly, and also loves to help others. Once someone asked her if she could clean up and stop zapping her, though she was there to help her cultivate, she still helped. She also loves to eat and does not waste any food. Someone had some rare emperor carrots and told her it was too wasteful to feed them to her, but she didn't accept the waste feeding. She was hardworking and honest, everyone adores Little Dream very much. She welcomed Master Bai as SJE called him Big Brother Bai and told him he took good care of the house that day, and Master Bai thanked her for the hard work. Inside the demon's secret realm, the talisman department all seemed to be useless, and with fear of being defeated, one of the guys saw Sue and wondered what kind of monster she might be. He shouted at her not to come closer to him. Miss Su Liu of the talisman department got a notification that she was ranked 47th in the trial and felt it needed to be faster. Then she eliminated the guy in front of him, and since there was no one there and it was not like the bird with her could talk, she noticed that there was something over somewhere, and then she decided to take a look. Suddenly, some of the disciples who seemed to have an alliance saw her and then decided to go and meet her. While at the academy square, the disciples were complaining that Miss Su was so cruel. Once senior brother Fang Zhu had been defeated already and had admitted defeat. But she also dared to kill him, they wondered how she was so strong, as they knew that all those from the talisman department were all weak as trash. Senior sister Moon on the other hand, and also at another place with Master Bai, asked him if he was not worried Bass his disciple was so vivid. Still, Master Bai told her that only the weak would care about the opinions of others and blindly restrain themselves, whether strong flaunt or not, they only do it according to their own likes and dislikes. Senior sister Moon jested that he was still the Bai Lauchen from 10 years ago who showed disdain towards the world. World, and Master Bai told her she was only imagining. At a meeting of the elders, they were confused about how the screen broke, and the elder told them all to keep quiet and keep order. All the developing arrays connected with Master Mu have failed, and also there seems to be a powerful offset of Kai in the trial site. This amazed the elder. He asked when it could be repaired and was told that remote repair was almost impossible and had sent THR array department disciples for emergence repair. All this seems that some people have not given up. Back inside the demon's secret realm, the freshman talent number one, Miss Sue, was considered nothing more than what she has done as she has been evaluated with some moves to some extent, and has not really given back much attack. She asked them if they were not afraid that she would go and report outside. But they asked her if she was planning to report to the law enforcement people and even told her she was out of luck as her master should not have offended those he should not have offended. To her amazement, it was he shyling, spiritual silence perfection stage, and Luo Zio of the Golden Core early stage. She didn't believe that the law enforcement hall could hide everything in the academy, and they threatened her that she would never leave that place alive and with the lightning that she has made. It was split by the blade Luo Zio was holding and this puzzled her. She saw that the two of them were more assertive. They were stronger than her at the moment, and it would be too difficult for her to escape and then she asked for help from the demon which her master had given her and also been going about in the trial informing it that she could not burn her realm again. The demon in the form of a bird complained to her that it had asked her to find treasures, but she could not find them, and she was very diligent in ordering it around and as she had requested, it turned back to the ice silkworm. Zio, who had much power and knowing they both were no match for her and if they still have some common sense then they should get lost. Shilling was amazed as she saw that the demon has transformed into a human and she asked if she was a demon king and Zio told her it was good she knew she was a demon king and should get lost as she has learned and they went off. After the encounter, Sue asked Zio why she had made herself so big, and she replied that if she was going to disguise herself, she had to follow through, and she was not going to show her true self to the enemy. Miss Sue asked if it was really okay to let them go just like that as she was fascinated by her master, but that did not mean she could command as she liked as she turned back to the birds demon told Sue to let them go as the mysterious treasures were calling out to her. A few days before the great exam, Miss Sue asked Zio what she was doing to her body, and Zio told her that she was following her orders and was helping her cultivate. She then helped her treat her wounds, she told her that the elixir that the old monster gave her could only barely heal her injuries, and her body could not absorb the medicinal power to treat her at the moment. She told her not to worry as she would use electricity to stimulate the repair of her meridians, and it will only be a little stimulating. In her kai, she began to have flames of power in her eyes, which seemed that she really wanted to fight and was actually about to attack. Just then, some poison maggots appeared. Zio told her not to look at it as a mere demon because if they came in large numbers, even a demon king would suffer and told her she should be grateful that she was there, otherwise, she could forget about living that day. 
The poisonous maggots could live in a dark environment with abundant spiritual kai, which means there must be a treasure hidden there if it was like that. Zio saw what happened as an extraordinary encounter that excited her, and it seemed that her breakthrough would be around the corner. Speaking of it, the place looked familiar. Miss Sue suggested that they go back first as she was having some bad feelings about it, but Zio assured her with a denim king with her there was nothing she should be afraid of since they had found the place. She suggested that they go in and take a look and to prove herself, she made a cold sky splash, and assured her again that with her presence to protect her, she could have all the fun she wanted, but Miss Sue told her to take a closer look before she said anything, and she was shocked to see that the door she tried to open was still locked. She tried it again, but still, it would not heed her powers as there was not even a single scratch. She complained about the point of making an abandoned ruin with poison maggots so sturdy, and it was that time that Miss Sue came and touched the door with her bare palm. At the same time, a slight aura was put into her effort. As they got inside through the door, they were amazed at what they saw. Xiao Meng began to sing, and as they were moving on, she told Miss Su that it was stated there that there was an inheritance left by an expert, which made the place really look familiar. Just as she kept thinking about the place, she flashed back to her past life past life memories. The demonic aura was the sealed place she set up in her previous life when she was still in the Mahayana stage. Back to the present day, she shouted at Zayo to stop and not touch the door, but it was too late, and the whole place shook with frightening power and sound. Someone reported to the elder that there was a sudden anomaly in the secret realm, and all the teleportation arrays were not working. This made the elder afraid that the demon emperor in the unity stage had appeared. The people began to tremble, they wondered why a demon emperor had appeared. Some complained about their Taoist partner being inside the secret realm, and others answered them that it seemed the headmaster had rushed to the scene with the elders. The headmaster assured them all not to panic and keep calm as he asked the deacon hall what was happening inside the ruins. It sounds impossible for a demon emperor to show up, and actually, there were still a lot of disciples who could not escape from the ruins, and the teleportation array was no longer available. This made the elder order the sending of simple teleportation arrays inside the trial realm as he knew they must save all they disciples stuck inside. Meanwhile, Yunxi and Yunruo were still wondering what all the things were when Master Bai and Senior Sister Moon who was their master in the four art department, came to meet them, assuring them to calm down and not to panic anymore as they were there too. Then Master Bai asked of Miss Su Liu. Unfortunately, they told him they had not. Also, the disciples transported out were to appear beside their instructors, meaning Miss Su Liu might be in trouble. Demon Emperor Dong Zhu has returned and has claimed that the world was his own. The Ice Silkworm, Miss Xiao, was confused about what she should do. Perhaps to leave Miss Su Liu as she wondered why there was a Demon Emperor sealed in such a secluded place, and still, she knew she wouldn't be able to explain the matter to the monster. On seeing them, the Demon Emperor, Dong Zhu, asked what a puny human was doing at the place, and filter theory was so unlucky. And sensing this, Miss Si suggested that she help Miss Xiao Meng. Still, she told her that not doing anything was the best help. Xiao Meng used all her strength to block the flip of the Demon Emperor's finger, which signifies its power. Xiao Meng pleaded for mercy as she told the Demon King that Miss Su Liu was raised by demons when he asked what such a creature of the same race was doing at such a place and even complained if they were defying him, as they both do not know what to do. Xiao Meng suggests that Miss Su escape first as she already has her own way of getting away. As a result of this, she uses her power in pretense to send Miss Su away claiming out that she should not dirty his majesty, the demon emperor's eyes with her presence, while she also knew she had to buy time for her to be able to escape. She also claimed that it was not nice of her to eavesdrop on a lady's private conversation with the majesty while the demon emperor told them they were all mere insects, and he could take their life at any time. Previously, Master Bai had given Emis Zio an effective prohibition that her heart meridian, and blood essence could only drive, he then instructed her not to use it unless she had to, and being in front of the monster, she had no choice but to use it. The demon emperor had killed one of the disciples before the elders came to the realm, as they saw there was no end to what had happened. The leader instructed them to form spirit sword formation and then told Jiang to lead the instructors inside to search and rescue the disciples. The array elders and himself were to guard the teleportation array. As a master, Mu can only teleport people to the place once and finds the disciples. He must return immediately and must also remember not to engage with the demon emperor. Jiang accepted the task but suggested that they send in structure by back to the academy instead, as he was the only one in the revolving light stage, and if he went in, he would die. Jiang told them he would have to carry his core back, and he complained that he still had not settled the elixir matter with him. 
Master Bai told him that if he were to let him go just like that, he would not be able to keep calm. The elder also. Wei suggested that Master Bai should go back as he has already sacrificed a lot for the academy. But senior sister Moon reminded Headmaster Lai that Bai Laochen was also an instructor and asked how he will sit around comfortably knowing that the disciples were in danger, and also his only disciple was also in the secret realm and suggested that for that reason he should be allowed to go in with her words. Headmaster Lai agreed that Master Bai also follows them and also instructed the two not to push each other. Jiang was displeased with Master Bai going along with them into the secret realm. He walked up to him and told him it was ungrateful as he was going to die and no one was going to collect his body for him. But Master Bai told him to relax as he would help if that happened, and this even frustrated Jiang more. The demon emperor was furious as he asked who tried to ambush him and replied from afar that the prohibition had been broken, and was encountering resistance. Then, Master Bai began annihilation, where he gathered all his power and strength. Meanwhile, Mai Ming's corpse was in ruins, Miss Sayo felt terrible at how vicious the monster placed prohibition there. But luckily she had the ice silkworm shell that protected her life. She then flew out in search of Miss Su, who she saw and firstly wanted to ignore as she thought that if the Black Shadow was defeated, the Demon Emperor will come and kill her immediately. She has been contaminated with the demon scent, so if she brought her along with herself, and would definitely die also, with the restrictions broken, the minster would not be able to find her for the time being. Besides, she was captured to be a spirit pet, and she does not have any reason to stay. Once, she was asked if she had eaten carrots again, and this signifies that her eating was restricted. Also, the place she iced was shabby, and she was even treated like a bug, as she was offered mulberry leaf cake after she helped with a breakthrough. She became arranged as she began to think of all this and thought of taking Miss Sue to the monster, but she felt she must not die as there was no one to wash the clothes and make food in the future. It sounded weird to the demon emperor, and he wondered who he was, the strength of his caliber should not appear in that world but he was able to use his powers effectively and even hit the monster demon many times. But he remained silent, and this made the demon emperor asked if he thought he was not worthy enough to know his name. Jiang was also puzzled as he asked what kind of shadow could deal with the demon emperor so easily, and Master Bai told him it looked to be in the crossing tribulation stage only, and instructor Jiang could definitely do it. But Jiang was demotivated, and he suggested that they forget about the missing disciples and retreat immediately and even asked why Master Bai was holding a talisman. And unnoticeably, Master Bai placed the talisman on his forehead and this made Jiang fall unconscious and was tied to a tree. And it was then Master Bai felt it was time for him to take down the strange bird. The demon's power was almost exhausted, and still, it could still not hurt the shadow and was confused if it would die again, and just then, the earth demon also appeared, and he thought with the lord earth demon's help, the people would all be mere insects to be stepped on. The time limit was up, and Master Bai was returning to his original body, this made the monster think that he wanted to escape, and then it rose its aura so high to the chaos of the sky. Just then, there was another strong opponent. To the surprise of the demon emperor, the person asked if it had just said something about the earth demon just before, and Master Bai mocked it and told it that they had just fought together with his other self for so long and it could not even recognize him which indicated that the body he changed the other time has made him look different in the eyes of the demon emperor. Master Bai then took out a talisman and placed it on the demon emperor, who was amazed as it saw it was an immortal binding talisman. It also wondered how a mere bald monkey in the revolving light stage have an immortal binding talisman, and a clone in the crossing tribulation stage and Master Bai told him that even if he was in the revolving light stage, what the demon emperor has not seen before does not mean it was impossible. And this made the demon emperor ask again who he was, and Master Bai told him that if he didn't know him, then how did he know the demon from the west? The demon emperor became more confused as he asked what kind of monster he was and how he was able to burn his soul pleaded that it did not know anything and Master Bai should stop burning him. Zio heard the scream from afar and sensed that it was Dong Zhu's scream, and she felt like the monster would not punish her if he saw the girl like that. Master Bai told the demon emperor, Dong Zhu, that there should be no rush as he could take his time to think about it. He replied that he really didn't know. Just then, Zio Meng came flying with Miss Su in her hand and informed him that Miss Su was about to die, and this made him worried as he asked how she had become that way. Zio Meng pleaded that she was sorry as it was all her fault as she could not protect Miss Su properly. And when Master Bai knew that her condition was caused by the Demon Emperor, he became furious and did not want to know how it was connected to the Demon Race anymore as he has requested before. Demon Emperor Dong Zhu threatened Master Bai that he couldn't be killed and that if he did so, the Lord of Earth wouldn't let him go. Master Bai opened the gates of the Underworld, which means even that he was really ready to kill the Demon Emperor. He told him that even if the Supreme Demon came that day, he would still kill it while the demon emperor shouted out for help from the earth demon to save him, but the gate was closed on him, 
As expected of Master Bai, even the Demon Emperor can't do anything in his presence. There was an effect on Miss Su as she regained her consciousness, and Master Bai told her to bite him hard and not let go. After this, she fully regained her full consciousness, and she pleaded to her master for overstepping her bounds. Master Bai told her not to worry about it as it was not her fault. And it was then that she noticed the wound on Master Bai's body and asked if he was infected by the Demon Emperor. But he told her not to worry about it also as it was just a small remnant of the Demon Emperor, and was not a threat to him. It has been detected that the host was experiencing an external invasion, and antivirus mode was activated. Meanwhile, the demon was anxious as he had not thought that Master Bai would be foolish enough to sacrifice himself to save his disciple, and as long as there was a bit of him in the world, he could still live forever and threaten that after he took over his body he will destroy all the people who he saw as mere insects. Just then, there was an error which made the demon emperor wonder what was happening, and to his amazement, there was an unknown invasion detected in his body and has commenced annihilation. At night in King Liang Peak Disciple Room, Miss Su's eyesight has gotten worse and she thinks she needs to make a breakthrough immediately. She asks Xiao Meng and Master Bai if she has become a burden and decides to get stronger no matter what it takes. As Yang entered, she asked her if they had worked hard that day and asked if her eyes still felt uncomfortable. Miss Su Liu told Xiao Meng to look at her eyes and told her she was a cyclops. But Xiao Meng told her not to joke about that as it was her who made her look like that. So she pleaded with her to be sorry and next time she will protect her properly and won't let anything happen to her again. And Miss Su Liu told Xiao Meng not to come closer to her as it was too squeezy. While Master Bai was chopping wood early in the morning, Miss Su came out. And as he looked at her, he asked if she caught a cold. But she told her it was nothing and she just has a bit of a runny nose while Zioa told him that it might be her fault for Miss Sue to be like that and at that time. She had no choice but to go all out or else the demon sovereign would have noticed. And she told Master Bai that she does not think she has to be too worried as Miss Yu should be fully recovered in, at most, three days. Master Bai pushed out his aura in the form of a bird, and it told her there was no need to wait that long as he promised to take her to the four arts departments the next day. Master Bai also told them he would send a message to the senior sister Moon right away as they have got the best hot springs within 10,000 kilometers, and Yu's cold should be cured after the girls take a dip in them. The next day at Four Arts Department, Zio requested that Miss Sue let her see what she was hiding, and she told her it was in her sea of consciousness, so how could she show it to her? Zio told her she had risked her life to protect her and how could she not share her treasures with her and Miss Sue also asked her if she did not get the essence of the demon. Sovereign Master and this made Zio ask for her reward and what she precisely wanted to share was the reward she gets. The meditation techniques and life-saving treasures were all Master Bai's gifts for her, and she told Zio to go ask him for her own if she also wanted it too. Sue went straight into the water, which made her feel comfortable, and she could feel the coldness leaving her body. It looks amazing as the hot spring at the four arts departments was the best, if the best, in the whole entire cloud wilderness. They all began to play as Yun Ru, who was considered the troublemaker started to run and tease others to come after her and catch her. And just then, some things appeared to their shock, while the leader reminded them that they were all to take one sip each. They were recognized as demons called starlings and were the ones responsible for keeping the water clean, which means the quality of the springs there were also because of them. One of the demons told the others to stop shouting as they were going to blow their cover, while another answered that it was amazing as it had been waiting for the day for so long. Zio wondered if they could really clean the water as she could not recall hearing about them in her past life and thought perhaps they were new species. The vice instructor of the four arts department, Liu Kuyer, came towards the spring and mocked Miss Su as a bumpkin who had never seen the world and so much winning the post points on trial turned out being hard for her, and even compared her to Master Bai being the same and then told her she would show her how to properly use the starling. She called out to the starlings, who hurriedly answered her, telling her they were at Hewer service and even fighting for whose turn it was, all this amazed you. But the other girls there told her she did not need to take her words to heart as she was just taking her anger out on her since she can't beat their master. She asked them what was there to fight about with as she seemed to lack self-respect. One of them told her they saw their instructor entering Master Bai's room with her own eyes, and this puzzled you. Inside the room, Master Bai asked Senior Sister Moon if that was not a little inappropriate, and she told him not to act as if he did not want it. Of course, he also wanted to do it but asked if it was not a little weird to be roasting food indoors. She told him about the weirdo who roasts chicken wings outside the trial zone and asked when did he care about all the small details he told her that was a different case, as a man and a woman alone in a single room in the middle of the night. She also asked him why he did not care about the property when he was running around causing mischief and she told her he was too immature back then and told her that she must have some other reasons for asking him to come into the room and it was that time she sighs and knew he was so boring at the moment. 
she told him she wanted him to bring the disciples of the Four Arts Department to a secret realm in the Fanghu Mountains for training. This sounded weird to him as he told her he had never heard of it before, and she told him it was because it was a newly discovered secret realm, so she needed someone to watch over the place. He felt like SJU was kidding him, as he was just a cripple in the hallowed realm, and how could he watch over the disciples? She told him that although she knew his current strength, she knew how it far exceeded what he was showing. He explained to her that he couldn't leave his disciple behind and go out he grabbed his hand from behind romantically, and suggested that he can bring her along and also explained that a newly discovered secret realm is always rich in resources and it would be a good opportunity, and also that time's trial was disrupted and they could not collect resources. So whether they could successfully explore the secret realm was very important to the four arts department. However, she told him she couldn't leave the academy at the moment, and if he was willing to help her, she would be sure to make it worth it, and since it was like that, he agreed to do it. She felt happy as he accepted, and she commented he was still as cute as back when he was just a small boy and then kissed him, it was at the time she kissed him that Miss Sue's aim called him to go him as she was done. Miss Sue felt devastated by what she saw and hurriedly informed senior sister Moon that they would be on their way. Master Bai also thanked her for allowing her to use their hot springs while she reminded him not to forget his promise. At Azure Bird Peak, Master Bai asked Sue if she had learned the new skill. He thought to her and told her if she kept the pace, even a few dreams might lose her soon. He reminded her not to rush things, as the technique. Six origin skill was something he had just created, so she might have to be careful when practicing it. And must also remember all malicious thoughts from her mind when using it. As he noticed her, he asked if she was listening to her and was not distracted. She moved closer to him, grabbed his collar, and moved a little bit on her toes, then requested that they make a baby. Bai Liuachen gently halted Liu's advances, recognizing that she wasn't in a stable mental state. Liu, stop it, he firmly said. Confused, Liu questioned her master, asking if he didn't like her. Bai Liuachen reminded her that she had lost her reasoning and wasn't thinking clearly. Liu, undeterred, inquired if she wasn't as good as instructor Yu. This shocked Bai Liuachen, who reassured her that his relationship with senior sister Yu was not of that nature, and wondered what she was thinking during their training. Liu persisted, asking her master if she looked pretty. Bai Liuachen admitted that she was indeed beautiful but preferred her normal self. Employing his magic, Bai Liuachen calmed Liu, relieved that he had managed to stop her. Liu then expressed her desire to have three children and even had names in mind. Bai Liuachen, still concerned about Liu's mental state, hoped that she was okay. The following day, at the Fanghu Mountain Secret Realm, Bai Liuachen gathered his disciples and addressed them. He instructed them that they would be randomly sent to different locations within the Secret Realm. He emphasized the importance of determining their position upon arrival and advised them not to lose the locating and protecting talismans he had given them. Yunro urged everyone to listen to their martial uncle Bai, and the disciples echoed in unison, addressing him as martial uncle Bai. Bai Liuachen specifically reminded Liu not to be greedy for resources and to prioritize the task of rendezvous. Liu agreed, although internally she struggled with her emotions and felt embarrassed by her earlier actions towards her master. Nevertheless, she reminded herself that her ultimate goal was to become an immortal and tried not to dwell on her concerns about their relationship. Suddenly, a disciple rushed in, informing Yunro that someone was attacking outside. Yunro relayed the message to Bai Liuachen, prompting him and the others to rush out and investigate. However, they were surprised to find Kang Mingxiu, the elder of the Blissful Palace, confronting them. Yunro questioned Kang Mingxiu's presence, accusing her of betrayal and reminding her of her past actions against their sect and the former vice instructor. Kang Mingxiu retorted, accusing Yunro of ingratitude and claiming that she would teach her a lesson on behalf of her master. Overpowered by Kang Mingxiu's magic, Yunro resisted kneeling and Bai Liuachen intervened, warning Kang Mingxiu about the excessive use of the spirit weapon, as it could upset its spirit. To Kang Mingxiu's shock, she lost control of her own spirit weapon, and Bai Liuachen seized the flute. One of Bai Liuachen's disciples expressed surprise that their martial uncle was skilled in playing musical instruments, prompting another to compare his flute skills favorably to the instructors. Liu, quietly observing, mused that it was natural for Bai Liuachen to be good to Yunruo, considering their childhood friendship. Kang Mingxiu attempted to retrieve the jade flute forcefully, but the power within it overwhelmed her, tearing her clothes to shreds. The flute's power also threw her away, but one of her disciples managed to catch her. After sparing Kang Mingxiu and her disciples due to the power of the spirit weapon, Bai Liuachen instructed them to leave. Kang Mingxiu reluctantly ordered her disciples to retreat. Once they were gone, Bai Liuachen assured Yunro that he would give her the jade flute after they finished the secret realm and even help her upgrade it from a spirit weapon to an imperial weapon. Yunro expressed her gratitude, thanking Bai Liuachen for his support. Liu joined in congratulating Yunro, but one of the disciples accused Bai Liuachen of favoritism. 
by Liuachen responded by telling them not to be anxious, assuring them that there would be plenty of opportunities in the secret realm, as long as they worked hard. He also reminded Liu not to waste the opportunity presented to her. Xiao Meng approached Liu and revealed that she had seen Bai Liuachen carrying her to her room, wondering if something had happened between them. Liu dismissed her curiosity, stating that she was being nosy. Yunro informed everyone that the secret realm was now open and urged them to gather their equipment as they would be departing soon. The disciples coerced their agreement, addressing Yunro as senior sister. Yunro informed Bai Liuachen that she and the other disciples would enter the secret realm first and he reminded her not to disclose their whereabouts before the rendezvous. Liu approached Bai Liuachen and he reassured her, saying that he would accompany her this time to ensure there would be no accidents. Xiao Meng chimed in, declaring that she was there too. Bai Liuachen acknowledged her presence, stating that they indeed had Xiao Meng with them. To himself, Bai Liuachen wondered if he had made a mistake, realizing that a person who used the clear heart talisman should have a blurred memory for a day. Then, Liu informed Bai Liuachen that she was ready to go. Meanwhile, Kang Mingxiu vented her anger by beating up her male disciple for supposedly taking advantage of her. Another disciple approached and reported that Bai Liuachen and his disciples had entered the secret realm. Kang Mingxiu ordered her disciples to follow suit, emphasizing the importance of not forgetting their mission. Fanghu Mountain Secret Realm as Bai Liuachen and his disciples ventured into the secret realm, they found themselves ambushed by members of the Blissful Palace. One of the palace disciples targeted Yunruo, launching an attack and overpowering her attempts to defend herself with the Jade Flute. The palace disciple taunted Yunruo, commenting on the weapon's uselessness in her hands and even groping her while asking for more tricks. Yunruo called out to Bai Liuachen for help, but before he could reach her, the palace disciple unleashed a powerful magic attack on Yunruo's back, causing her intense pain. However, Bai Liuachen swiftly intervened, attacking the palace disciple and freeing Yunruo. He had realized that the reason his disciples were taking so long was due to the ambush set up by the blissful palace. Bai Liuachen approached Yunruo, offering her a roasted fish that he had brought for her. Concerned for her well-being, he asked if she was okay and if she could manage to walk. Yunruo assured him that she was alright, although her spiritual power had been significantly depleted, making her legs weak. Bai Liuachen inquired about the others, and Yunruo informed him that most of the ambushers had been killed, with the remaining few likely being unharmed. Bai Liuachen helped Yunruo with her bag and suggested they rendezvous with the rest of the group. Yunruo agreed, and as they made their way, she noticed something and brought it to Bai Liuachen's attention. He identified it as a soul wasp, suspecting that the blissful palace used it to gather souls. Realizing the urgency, Bai Liuachen emphasized the need to find the others as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Li was startled by Xiao Meng's sudden touch, causing her to scream out in fear. Xiao Meng retorted, claiming that it was Li Yu who scared the demon away with her thunder summoning, ridiculing her for cultivating in such an unconventional manner. Li Yu justified her methods, stating that the path to immortality goes against the natural order and requires sacrifices. She expressed her determination to catch up to her master quickly. Xiao Meng questioned Li Yu's obsession with catching up to what she referred to as a monster, to which Li Yu struggled to provide a valid reason. She mentioned the need to unseal the soul ancestor before expecting any further progress. Their conversation was interrupted by a group of people who confronted Li Yu and Xiao Meng. The group's leader, Kang Mingxiu, who happened to be the leader of the Blissful Palace, urged Xiao Meng to come with her to avoid further suffering. Xiao Meng defiantly rejected their threats, referring to the humans as stinky and claiming they had already endured enough hardships. Kang Mingxiu, not wanting to reveal her full strength to Xiao Meng, commented on the demon's status as a demon emperor. However, Zhao Meng relied on her magical power to counter her opponents. To her surprise, the humans possessed a demonic power that affected both Liu and Zhao Meng. Coughing, Zhao Meng admitted that she couldn't handle the human and urged Liu to quickly summon the monster she referred to, Bai Liuachen. The demonic power used by the humans originated from a demon master named Chang Zhao Liu, also known as Little Sixth Venerable. The leader of the humans corrected Xiao Meng, requesting to be addressed as Elder Sixth Venerable. When Li regained consciousness, she found herself in an unfamiliar place, unsure of how she got there. To her astonishment, she saw Kang Mingxiu, the leader of the Blissful Palace, invoking a spirit whose identity eluded her. Bound together with Li Yu was the junior sister from the Four Arts Department, also captured by the Blissful Palace. Kang Mingxiu declared that the time had come to begin their plans. Deeply concerned for the junior sister's safety, Li Yu attempted to use her magical power to free herself. However, Xiao Meng informed her that the super strong ice silk binding them was actually her own creation. Li Yu was shocked and questioned how Xiao Meng could betray her and their master, Bai Liuachen. Xiao Meng cryptically mentioned following the guiding wind and expressed her allegiance to Elder Sixth Venerable, Chang Xiao Liu, stating that Bai Liuachen meant nothing to her. 
to Liu's disbelief, Xiao Meng bound herself as well. Liu struck Xiao Meng and whispered a warning, reminding her of the potential consequences when Bai Liuachen arrived. Xiao Meng revealed that she had already used the locating talisman and urged Liu to cooperate in order to buy time. Chang Zhao Liu, rising to her feet, threatened to hammer Liu and Xiao Meng if they didn't remain quiet. Xiao Meng apologized, complying with her demand. Kang Mingxiu consulted with the soul ancestor, inquiring if there were sufficient souls. Xiling, a nascent soul great perfection stage cultivator from the soul refining sect, expressed disappointment in the blissful palace's preparations. Yang Cheng, an early stage spiritualization cultivator from the same sect, questioned the effectiveness of using only a few hundred souls to unseal the soul ancestor. Kang Mingxiu reassured them that there were still souls available to offer, ordering some men to fetch the junior sister from the four arts department. As the terrified junior sister was being brought forward, Liu urgently implored Xiao Meng to release her. However, before Xiao Meng could respond, the men attempting to approach the junior sister were electrocuted by lightning. Kang Mingxiu was taken aback by the unexpected turn of events. Xiao Meng informed her that it was the ability of a demon emperor like her. Kang Mingxiu reluctantly sought assistance from Chang Xiao Liu who questioned why she should help, as their agreement had been to defeat the demon emperor. Kang Mingxiu referred to her as Little Sixth Venerable, but Chang Xiaoliu insisted on being addressed as Elder Sixth Venerable. Kang Mingxiu reflected on the fact that the Blissful Palace possessed three Kasha twigs, with two already used. She considered it a waste to use the second one in their current location. Yang Cheng questioned her distress, but she remained silent. Suddenly, Yang Cheng suggested using the souls of the Blissful Palace members. Xi Ling reminded Kang Mingxiu of the strength they relied on for the rise of the Blissful Palace. Just as the tension rose, their lord arrived, exclaiming that it had been a thousand years since he last saw Yun Huang. Liu exclaimed that the released entity was none other than the Earth Immortal Soul Ancestor, responsible for centuries of calamities. Yang Cheng and Xi Ling joined in unison, welcoming the Soul Ancestor as disciples of the Soul Refining Sect. The soul ancestor took notice of a superior soul present and directed his magic towards Kang Mingxiu, commanding her to come with him. Desperate, Kang Mingxiu called out to Chang Xiaoliu, referring to her as Little Sixth Venerable, seeking her assistance. Chang Xiaoliu reminded her once again to address her as Elder Sixth but ultimately saved her. Xiao Meng urged Liu to flee, but Chang Xiaoliu intervened, instructing Liu to stay put if she wanted to live. Xiao Meng pleaded for Liu to take her along as well, but in an instant, they both vanished. The soul ancestor expressed his astonishment that a mere demon master dared to snatch someone away from him. Xi Ling implored for his mercy, explaining that the Yun Huang soul sect had been besieged by major sects for a thousand years, confined to controlling smaller sects, and Chang Xiao Liu was merely a puppet of the soul refining sect. Enraged by the moralistic oppression imposed upon the soul sect, the soul ancestor decided to consume the soul of the junior sister from the four arts department. He proclaimed that the world would once again experience true fear. However, as he attempted to devour their souls, Xiao Meng shielded them, anticipating Bai Liuachen's arrival. Suddenly, Bai Liuachen emerged to their rescue, remarking on the difficulty the soul ancestor had faced in finding him. Bai Liuachen questioned why villains like the soul ancestor always seemed to hide in corners. The soul ancestor was taken aback by Bai Liuachen's presence, to which Bai Liuachen retorted, questioning if the soul ancestor had never encountered a man of character before. Xi Ling and Yang Cheng failed to recognize Bai Liuachen, as his true abilities remained concealed. The immortal soul ancestor, puzzled by Bai Liuachen's power in the revolving light stage, unleashed his magic upon him. However, Bai Liuachen summoned the five-star divine talisman, rendering the attacks ineffective. Surprised by Bai Liuachen's extraordinary skills, the immortal soul ancestor expressed his curiosity about Bai Liuachen's identity. In response, Bai Liuachen revealed himself as the immortal soul ancestor's father. Enraged, the immortal soul ancestor activated a soul swamp to trap Bai Liuachen. But Bai Liuachen managed to free himself and summon the divine talisman Xuan Wu. The immortal soul ancestor taunted Bai Liuachen, challenging him to withstand his power. Bai Liuachen possessed an old fly system, which he beckoned to explain the nature of his domain. The system provided him with a detailed explanation, exciting Bai Liuachen. He smiled, perplexing the immortal soul ancestor who assumed Bai Liuachen had lost his mind due to fear. Unbeknownst to the immortal soul ancestor, Bai Liuachen attacked and injured him within his own domain. Amazed by Bai Liuachen's ability to harm him, the immortal soul ancestor inquired about the object in Bai Liuachen's hand. Bai Liuachen merely described it as the axe he used for chopping wood. This response surprised the immortal soul ancestor. Bai Liuachen explained that in the past, he used the axe to uphold justice, but the immortal soul ancestor now resembled a lifeless piece of wood. 
Meanwhile, Xiao Meng was occupied punishing Kang Mingxiu. Kang Mingxiu warned her that she would be the first to die when the soul ancestor emerged. To their astonishment, they were unaware that Bai Luochen had already slain the soul ancestor. Yang Cheng was subsequently killed, and Bai Luochen threatened to harm Xi Ling. Begging for her life, Xi Ling promised to cooperate, leading Bai Luochen to decide to take her back to the academy for interrogation. One of the sisters from the Four Arts Department escorted Xi Ling away. Bai Luochen then inquired about Liu, but Xiao Meng could not provide an answer. Attempting to flee, Liu was captured by Bai Luochen, insisting she was unaware of the situation and unable to offer any assistance. Tang Daodu, one of the sisters from the Four Arts Department who happened to be blind, informed Bai Luochen that she used the mindfulness technique and discovered that senior sister Su had been abducted by the demon master and taken to the Blissful Palace. Bai Luochen was taken aback by this revelation. Within the confines of the Blissful Palace, where Liu was being held captive, she encountered something peculiar. To her surprise, it addressed her as Kai Zhu, Liu's name in her previous life. Back in Liu during their first life in the Liu Lai Palace, Kai Zhu informed Man Man that it had been over a thousand years since they reached the Earth Immortal Realm. However, Man Man reminded her that they had agreed not to force their immortal destiny, questioning why Kai Zhu was bringing it up again. Kai Zhu explained that she had received an epiphany, a heavenly bestowed fortune. Curious, Man Man asked about the nature of her epiphany. Kai Zhu revealed that they had been cultivating incorrectly all along and that the realm of immortality was beyond mortal imagination. She then revealed the presence of the three corps within her, which hindered their ability to ascend to immortality. Destroying one of the three corps, Kai Zhu's actions alarmed Man Man who believed that she was experiencing cultivation deviation. Man Man explained that the three corps represented her origin spirit, and she vowed to find a way to bring Kai Zhu back to normal, emphasizing the importance of protecting her origin spirit. Man Man concealed herself from Kai Zhu, who called out to her, reminding her of their agreement to become immortals together. Kai Zhu declared that she would not let Man Man prevent her from ascending to immortality, summoning her sun-eating moon wheel. Despite Man Man's attempts to escape, Kai Zhu claimed she knew her hiding spots after living together for a thousand years. Kai Zhu threatened to flatten mountains or drain water bodies to uncover Man Man's location. Eventually, Kai Zhu discovered where Man Man was hiding, prompting Man Man to question why Kai Zhu had suddenly lost her sanity. In response, Kai Zhu retorted that perhaps it was Man Man who had lost her mind, not her, urging her to ascend to immortality. Man Man, determined not to lose her mind and go insane in the pursuit of immortality, unleashed the mystic technique. Kai Zhu boasted that her moon fairy wheel was stronger than Man Man's technique. After a clash between their powers, Man Man declared that she had won this time. Kai Zhu questioned why Man Man did not want to ascend with her, emphasizing their friendship. Man Man explained that precisely because they were best friends, she did not wish to see Kai Zhu in such a state, and was determined to bring her back to normal, even if it meant restoring only a part of her. Kai Zhu expressed her apologies and pleaded with Man Man not to leave, but it was too late, Man Man was already dead. Kai Zhu wept bitterly, and that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video, but most important, leave a comment, until the next video.